you're still watching Ways now the night of 22nd to 23rd August 1791 in Santo Domingo um, Haiti and the Dominican Republic saw the beginning of uprising that would play a crucial role in the abolition of transatlantic slave trade now it's against this background that the International Day for the remembrance of slave trade and its abolition is commemorated on the 23rd of August each year. This International Day is intended to inscribe the tragedy of the slave trade in the memory of all people. And in, in accordance with the goals of the intercultural project, the slave route, it should offer an opportunity for collective consideration of the historic causes, the methods and the consequences of this tragedy and for an analysis of the interaction to which it has given rise between Africa, Europe, Americas, and the Caribbean. The Americas and the Caribbean. You know, I didn't used to know that America is actually United States. You know, you many serious? people don't think, no, you don't get it. Many people don't know that America is actually United States of America. So there they are many, do. so they call them the Americas. No, that's not what they call no, the Americas. So the yeah. Americas are separate. It's so you have North yeah. America. And that's what I'm saying America. now. Oh, it's so different from you, United, United States yeah, of America. No, it's different. Yeah. So United are you States is part of North America. Oh, I thought it was the United States that is making it no, the Americas. No, the Americas. So, so there's South America, America North America. I don't know my map, but don't worry. I'm all right like that. So what do you think about the slave abolition? Interesting. I mean, it has to be remembered. Mm -hmm. So starters, the numbers are staggering. 12.8, thereabout, million people um, who actually were traded. Um, another 1.2 to about double that, 2.4, that died mm. on the way. Mm -hmm. And more that died out of that 12.8 million. So the sheer numbers are startling of the lives that were lost. So anything that can be done to shine a light of it, because let's not forget that modern day slavery that was is, where I was still, to is still happening. Mm -hmm. All the Black Lives Matter, institutional all of that, slavery. institutional. So all these things are fed from this very dark time in, mm -hmm. in human history. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we do remember it, and, and maybe days like this will get us thinking about how we got to where we are, mm -hmm. and then focus on how we can, you know, yeah, get rise to above better. it. Yeah. That modern day slavery is the one that is really, you know, it's scary <laughs> stuff. Scary. Mm -hmm. When I see pictures, I saw some pictures, and they were awful, oh, yeah. horrible. Did you ever watch I Roots? No, I, I did actually, but I think because I need to watch Akinte. it again. Yeah, I need like, to watch it you, again. You know, so it will take you right back. It into... almost makes you racist. Like oh, you, you feel like you don't want to see a white person. Oh it's my that. It's that. No, it's deep. and there was one that Lupita Youngo acted. Um, oh gosh, I know. I can't, I can't remember the name. Uh, of the, I can't remember the, the name, but ah, I mean, it took that, me a long time that to watch that. That movie was intense. Oh Twelve years of sleep. Twelve years. Yeah. <laughs> that was like awesome. Do you think awesome it's on Netflix? Do you think it's it on might be. It might be. But I mean, it. Twelve Years a Slave is an awesome, it's an awesome movie. And she, uh, that was when I fell in love with Lupita. I mean, that was the role that that was like yeah, her breakout that, role. Yeah, her breakout role. Um, but yeah. that was an awesome movie. But again, mm -hmm. to see the plight that a human Africa, puts another yeah. human through. Absolutely. Well, who right, so, who gave us out? Well, our leaders. Our people. <laughs> All right, so. What did you find for us in the news? Okay, so my headline says, so this is about the CBN, mm. and this is talking about um, 2019. So they just came to give a report um, of their act, some of their activities in 2019, or based on their 2019 annual report. And the headline says, CBN disperses, um, disperses 237 billion Naira's worth of banknotes to merchants and others in 2019. So these are um, smaller denomination notes. So this is everything below 100 Naira, so 5, 10, 20, yeah. uh, 50. Um, so if you think about the value of these notes mm -hmm. and the amount that it has totaled to, 237 billion, and it talks about the different ways in which they have shared this, about 112 million, a billion of that was via microfinance banks. Another 117 billion was via Union Bank, mm. uh, via the ATMs and over the counter. And the rest went to shopping malls, toll gates, um, and directly to merchants. Now, for me, why this story stood out is because we've been talking so much about cashless. We've been talking so much about what Nigeria can do because we still have a large population that is underbanked or mm -hmm. not even banked Absolutely, at all. Yeah. So is it that our cashless um, policies working? aren't working? 
that we still have to, and this is, I mean, the story also goes well, to talk about this growth. policy cannot really work. I was going to. Because guess what? It's not even the, it's not even those market women that yeah. are carrying cash. It is your bullion vans that are carrying cash. Well, so cash is expensive to manage. So in that entire bullion van process is why we are moving towards a cashless. But this is, this, why this story stuck out to me, because it's purely targeted at the informal sector. So mm -hmm. it says they've given about 14 uh, point, uh, about 14, just over 14 um, billion to market association. So this is direct to market people. So again, what are we doing? CBN, the financial sector, to, to bank these people. Mm. Because that informal sector, if we don't bank them, I mean, I know even though Nigerians don't like to pay tax, but there's a lot of money seeping out through that informal sector. If we can get this money together, maybe we, we won't look Uti, to China. Well, I, ag I agree with you, but I think it's a gradual process. Absolutely. It's going to be oh, no, of course. evolutionary, yeah, so of course. I think we're getting there. Yeah. Some 10 years ago, ATM was, yeah. Yeah, I agree. you know, so and and we're getting POS there. Yeah, and all you know. that, yes. It's working. It will, we'll, we'll get, get there, there yeah, I think, just sir. That. So I think what we need to to see is we want to see year on year a reduction rather yeah. than year on year growth. I think, and it's yeah, still I think there's an increase. I think no, so. they, the For story me. even says there's an increase, yeah. both in the lower denominations and the higher denominations. Well, so we're still we'll dependent on there. cash. Let me quickly your okay. story. <laughs> I took the story in a rush, so I hope I'm able to remember the facts. It uh, was about um, Aisha Buhari, the first lady. I think any story that revolves around her, sensationalism. Or something, I don't know why, because I see her as someone selfish. So, mm. Yes. Really? How? Yes. How so? Yeah, I think she's selfish. I'm not going to go. <laughs> anyway, um, she was talking about the um, medical tourism mm. in Nigeria and how ways to end it. And I'm saying, why is she talking to us? She knows the appropriate authorities to talk to. Mm -hmm. Do you think Nigerians really want to waste money going abroad to seek medical help oh, yeah. if there was an alternative here? So she knows the people to talk to. She starts screaming to Nigerians. And I heard. I think it's a deflection. I heard. Okay, oh, she's deflecting from. I think it's okay. deflection. I Sahara, Sahara so, reporters helped you to. Report. I was going to say. Yes. Yeah. Sahara reporters said, mm. rumored that she actually went for shopping for the daughter for the impending marriage of her. Yeah. I would. I wouldn't want to. I, I wouldn't want. To I be, saw that story. She yesterday. might. Not, I don't want to think she'll be irresponsible. I don't to want do to that. believe so, that. But no, I don't you know, think so. I, don't, I, I, don't I, I think that's why that. I say that this is deflection because yeah. she has a long history. Do you remember back with the mm -hmm. Asaro Clinic mm -hmm. and Paracetamol mm -hmm. and all of that? She has a long history. This this um, this statement just seemed to come out of nowhere. Mm. Like there's no trigger, there's nothing. And and should, just she, she can make it a like, pet project. You're talking the about healthcare. it and I'm like, what triggered it? And the only thing that puts you in the news recently is the fact yeah. that you had neck pain mm. okay. and then you, you were had to go to Dubai. Yeah. And then they come back and there are rumors, rumors or, you know, allegations oh, so that I get you, what went, you, you went, you know, shopping. Okay. So you got to find a way to... So deflect from the prop, from yeah. those stories. But well, we thank God for her life because we heard that um, she almost... Um, the, <coughs> yeah, the jet of, almost crashed. a bit of turbulence. I saw mm. her thanking the, the pilot. Well, moving on. <laughs> Sarah, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project has sent an open letter to President Muhammadu Buhari. Um, uh, requesting him to rescind his accent to the Company and Ally Matters Act 2020. Um, this karma thing that has been going all, um, around, on and on and on, on, and yeah. on you know. Fact versus fiction. <laughs> or oh, fact versus sens sensationalism. Like sorry. What's your take? What's your take on this karma stuff? Because the part I heard um, Bishop Oedipo was talking about, you know, I don't think. Same for me. People have worked hard. They've built strong institutions. And you think you can just wake up and say you want to come and carry somebody and put them... Sensationalism. Way too. That's why I said... I thought you were even coming from... Yeah, that's why I said, no. That's, you know, what, it's what a what she question. Said, no, what okay. she said already gives you the insight because she said, from what I have heard. Uh, and that is what... I have not really... Yeah. From what I heard. What have you gone to research? What mm. have you gone to read? Mm. So, the NGO bill... Mm. Lam is lawyer, so I know the NGO bill. The NGO bill, so it, it felt like this was almost like a back doorway trying to sneak. Well, why do they the even NGO have to bill? sneak it in? Listen, so. my stake is for uh, most churches, all churches actually are registered under Part C, mm -hmm. which is incorporated trustees. They didn't incorporate themselves, they went to the government to incorporate them. So, why don't they want to subject themselves to the government? I don't understand. Yes, but do the, they but do that abroad? No. 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 So it's not about subjecting yourself to the government. Again, yeah. this is why I said it's a bit of a backdoor trying to <laughs> slide parts of the NGO bill in. Yeah. But the reality of it is, 
it is not what most people are getting from this is that the government can just come and re remove our trustees. Yes. There is still... Well, that is wrong. There should be accountability but even in the church. Yes, me, but have no. they, the government, have yes. they been accountable in their own institutions? We'll start from somewhere. Okay. Hey, well, no, no, that's my point. Us. Listen, you we are going to start listen, from somewhere. Listen, these institutions are already working. The Let them do you, no, how do you no, focus no, on the ones that are not working? No, no, The government cannot do it without... The courts. They can't just wake up tomorrow. That's what no, I'm saying. No, no, I don't know. Okay, we're going to call more. No, no, they, can wait. Wait. Oh, no yeah, they can do it. You can challenge it in court, but they can do it, of course. No, let us. They can let them right. challenge it in because court. this is part of what we are saying. I'm a Christian, they but they the, can't do but it. But the issue is, why, is why it not? Even about Christianity? If they needs, don't have anything in their cupboard, why are they, why are they fearful of that? for it to be done. Let's just be sure about that. I don't agree with you. Let Dr. We'll see you after the break.